Welcome back to Gatabud. This is my Red 13 legendary bout video. Red 13 is the first time that I'm going to have a ribbon as my accessory here, and that's because the final enemy is the Great Malboro. And I realized that you can cast resist with a cleansing materia, but I'd rather just go for the win, and we're gonna win by casting Blizzard a bunch. So this is a very Blizzard-centric build with NP Absorb, HP Absorb on Fire and Ice. I did HP on Fire and Ice. Um, Skill Master, I did do Time for Haste, ATB Stagger, Magic Up. Notice there's no HP or MP anywhere to be found. We've got Ice with Magic Focus, and we've got Ice with Swift Cast. We've got ATB Boost, we've got First Strike, and we do not have Cure. We are going for it all. And the reason why I can justify leaving out Cure is if you're in a bind here, you probably have your Limit Gauge full, or you have your Vengeance Gauge full, and you can heal yourself with other means other than casting Blizzard. So I use the Silver Collar with Vengeance Gauge, Charge Rate Up, Offensive MP Saver, Magic Attack Power plus 20, and MP Recovery Rate Up. The Summon is Titan because I always forget to set my Summon to something useful. I would recommend Bahamut Arisen or Gilgamesh though. Round one is easy. You cast Blizzaga and win. Round two is our one round where we have to use fire magic instead of ice, although we can sneak some ice magic in there. And that is why I have HP absorption on the fire and ice and not MP absorption. You shouldn't run out of MP doing this, and even if you get low, it's okay because you're going to get it back next battle. I always like to start my battles by casting Haste as my first act, and then try to get back up to 2 ATB, and then fire off magic spells as I am able to. We are not interested in healing, so we need to be smart and dodge his attacks. It's pretty predictable because most of them involve him charging at you, and eventually he's just going to get tired, and then you're going to have an opportunity to unload on him. The move that you want to pay attention for is called Breather. That's when the process starts where you're going to get the win. As long as you don't get trucked waiting for Breather, you're going to be fine. So just be patient and keep dodging. I also wouldn't immediately charge in after you see the elephant stop running because one of his moves, and I'm not sure which, if you hit it fast after it stops, it'll cause the move to continue and he will make a sharp angle and go straight for you and you're going to get hit. So just wait for other openings to go in and hit. He also has a couple ranged attacks using his nose that are pretty nasty. Um, other than them being gross, they're not really a threat to you as far as damage goes. Now he's finally using Breather. This is a win. Once this thing is staggered, I actually used Blizzaga here and did almost quad 9, so close enough because I wanted to get some MP back, and that is something I would recommend doing. We are on to round three, incident free. Round three kind of stinks. I don't like it. Let's start right, though. One thing that I think is really important is to use Chilling Roar as your second action. And the reason being is you will get hit some. And if you have a sloppy run like I do, it's going to result in getting your Vengeance Gauge filled up just passively. So I definitely think you should do this to compensate for the possibility of playing a stinker like I'm about to do here. This frog isn't 
particularly difficult. It's just really annoying. And the most annoying thing is to try to time your Blazagas with its tongue being out and having enough time to hit it with Blazaga. And at the same time, you don't want to just sit there with full ATB waiting for it to happen because you're leaving damage on the table. So it's kind of a balancing act, and I don't think I did a great job on this round. Basically, that's how its pressure mechanic works. You want to target the tongue. Part of the reason why this was so sloppy is I was trying to experiment with guarding tongue attacks to see if that helped get it better exposed. And if it does, it involves doing a perfect guard and not just holding R1. So I kind of almost intentionally put myself in a bad situation for the sake of science. And I'm still able to squeak out a win here, which speaks to how forgiving this fight can be. Now, remember when I said use Chilling Roar? Because I was so sloppy and because I took so much damage, I now have a half full vengeance gauge for me to start mounting my comeback here. After Whirly Tongue, the frog's tongue hangs out for a little bit and that's my opportunity to do a quick Blizzara and actually pressure it while I am in vengeance mode. Additionally, if you're going to use Blizzara and it's not when the tongue is out, I strongly recommend you exercise patience and only do it immediately after it has landed from using Flatten. Therefore, you know you're not going to miss because you can miss a Blizzara. You can even miss a Blizzaga. Don't do it. And it's once I start following these rules and philosophies that you see me start to have success and not get hit too much. On this battle, if you just dodge flatten and then go in there and get a couple hits off or use that as your opportunity to cast Blizzara, you can win literally just attacking him during flattens. Where I got into trouble here was me trying to do too much and that got me in bad situations. Anyways, a win is a win, and I'm going to end up going to round four in just as good of shape as I would have if I had won this battle in, say, one minute. I'm gonna be full MP, pretty high HP. Everything's fine, just get past it. Round four, ding ding, we want to start exactly like we did last round with haste and chilling roar because if you get hit, you will charge your vengeance gauge as a byproduct and be able to compensate for the damage you just took. This enemy is very evasive and its pressure mechanic makes it even more evasive but able to be staggered more quickly and what you want to do is just like that frog wait till it uses one of its moves dodge it and then quickly use a blizzara and i would generally discourage using blizzaga when it's not staggered because it really stinks if you spend two whole atb charges only for your blizzaga to completely miss and trust me, you will have misses on this. It happens, it's okay, it's not going to doom you. 
the good news is this thing gets staggered very, very, very quickly, and that's your opportunity to unload Blazagas and get your health full and everything else. Honestly, this is a way easier battle than round three was. Just be smart about it and don't miss on your spells. And the reason why I said don't try to Blazago when he's not staggered, you're going to see me straight up whiff on a Blazago when I felt like I was doing a good job using it while he's doing a move. The problem is the move is over and he still will move very quickly to get out of the way. So, oof. One thing that I tried here that I would not recommend you do is I used Red's level 1 limit while it was staggered. And in hindsight, I would have been better off casting even two Blizzaras than I would have been using that limit. So don't do that either. Learn from my mistakes. After the second stagger, the enemy is left with a small amount of health left and you just keep doing exactly what you've been doing and you're going to get the win. I will see you in round five. Welcome to round five. This is why we're wearing a ribbon. You want to use your ATB boost and then cast haste on yourself. And the second that the mouth becomes targetable because it opens with a breath move, you want to cast Blazara on the mouth and then run in and start furiously attacking. If there was ever an example in this legendary bout of the best defense being a good offense this is that example the pressure doesn't last very long so you want to do the best you can to get as close to two full atb charges as possible when you see pressure wear off you can give it the business for about three or four more seconds and then you need to get out of the way fast. At long range, its only threat is Biora or Bioga, whatever that is. Um, but you have Ribbon, so you don't get poisoned. But the actual spell itself will do about 1,000 damage. So the last thing you want to do is put yourself in very low HP and get hit by that. During this back off phase, this is a really good time to get Chilling Roar up. I should have done it a little earlier than I did because I was running around with two full gauges for a little bit. So a little bit of wasted time there, but not a big deal. What we're doing here is waiting for it to start using a breath move again. And then we want to run in and get behind it and be ready to cast Blizzara very promptly once that mouth appears. Now, I personally lost track of time here a little bit, but after that Blizzara and you have pressured it, this is a terrific opportunity to use ATB boost and then fire off a quick Blizzaga. And that should have this thing staggered at this point if you hit while still pressured. I left it with like 5% left on its stagger gauge though. Once you do have it staggered though, mathematically you're technically better off using Blizzara than Blizzaga because Blizzaga is going to do well over quad nines and Blizzara should be somewhere in the 6,000 range. So you're going to get more damage per ATB by using Blizzara. The con to it though is that you are casting twice instead of once. So there's kind of a little bit of a trade-off there. 
I do think there's a lot of value in exiting Stagger with at least one full ATB charge ready to go, just in case it uses breath or you need to reapply haste. And also, again, try to keep track of time and use ATB boost wisely because there are lots of opportunities to put yourself in a way better position by going from one to two charges at a strategic moment. Again, I have no idea why I had Titan equipped. I just forgot to change it, and that shows how much I use red, the fact that Titan was equipped to red. I do manage to get a pressure Blizzago off and that staggered it quickly. That's a win. Not too bad for a round five. And I want to congratulate you on being one step closer to platinum. Thank you so much for joining me here on Gataba. There are only three legendary bouts that remain and they are coming soon.